Fifty Alphaville held a festival in the heart of the city of London to challenge the way the financial world thinks and to look hard into the future of finance. To ease proceedings along in festival style, there was cabaret, comedy, robots, igloo chat rooms, and even Alphaville vouchers. A big talking point was also the so-called cashless society, something that's arguably been anticipated since at least biblical times. So why is it that we the people still cling stubbornly to cash? So we're starting off with a debate about the future of money, and who better to introduce this entire concept and debate than Guy DeBell, the assistant governor of the RBA. And he's here in virtual mode, on the stage right now. And to thank for allowing me to grace the stage from the other side of the world in various pundits of uh, forecasts of debt of cash for a number of times over the past hundred years. Cash itself has actually proved to be fairly versatile. Some say that's because paper money offers the sort of anonymity that defends society's freedoms. Who cares about easy transactions if it means having to trust just one trusted intermediary? Others say that digital money still hasn't solved the basic problem of frictionless and fungible transactions. But now something called cryptocurrency is making bold claims about having solved both of these issues. Its most famous incarnation is the stateless currency Bitcoin. But how promising is this technology when we compare it to other payments innovations which are also going on at the moment? Using, for example, crypto type technologies to create currencies, for the first time we might be able to embed more information in the currency than just uh, an exchange of value, i.e. metadata. I mean, people are familiar with the idea of data and metadata. It could prescribe um, what kind of value that you could, uh, what kind of items you might be able to purchase with that currency. So for instance, um, uh, it, it, might, uh, it, it might only allow you to buy food rather than entertainment. Even within the tech world, there are, there are two camps now. Designs become very important in Silicon Valley. Uh, and an example in finance would be Square, which is very design focused, very focused on the, just the, the way the products look and the user experiences. Uh, and then there's the big data camp, the, the computer science camp. At the moment, design is on the ascendancy lot across all of technology because of Apple. Um, but the, there might be a, a reaction and it, things might move towards uh, science. It's not true that Bitcoin is the internet of money. Bitcoin is the horse carriage of money, honestly. Bitcoin is so terribly slow and actually if you have a large amount of money in Bitcoins to be withdrawn, it's faster to go take the, the plane to go to Switzerland, withdraw the money and come back with, with cash than actually to use Bitcoin because large transactions require many confirmations in current Bitcoin system. Uh, one of the fundamental mistakes of uh, Bitcoin is that they use the longest chain rule to decide simultaneously which block gets accepted and which transactions get accepted and this already is a big mistake. We're here at Camp Alphaville talking about the future of money and whether we're moving towards a cashless society. So I'm now going to try and buy a beer. Can I buy a beer please? And do you take Bitcoin? Uh, we don't, I'm afraid. We take uh, some Camp Alphaville vouchers today and pound sterling. I think pound sterling is just a slightly safer bet for us at the moment. So there you go, that's the view from our vendors. They're certainly not taking Bitcoin. Cash is still a safer bet. Bitcoin is one of the most important inventions of the 21st century, but it has some a number of serious problems programmed in, genetically built in, it's in the DNA of Bitcoin. Uh, for example, I am an author of something which is called a theory of self-destruction of Bitcoin. So I think Bitcoin is in trouble, but it's here to stay and this requires something which we should call a Bitcoin reform. My suspicion is there'll be an enormous amount of experiments and some will be, or many, maybe most will be sort of evolutionary blind alleys. This is a really bad way to frame a currency, but I suspect there'll also be some stunning winners out of that. So what we've discovered from our panelists is that it's probably a long hard road to a cashless society and it's preferable if we meet a designer, a systems architect and a financier to get to the end of it. I'm Isabella Kaminska from Camp Alphaville in the heart of the city of London. <laughs>